my name, as Ben said, is Scott Bryan, and I'll be talking about applications of TOSIMS tandem MS imaging for industrial problem solving. Some of you might be wondering, you know, why um, make such a big deal about MSMS -MS now? I mean, TOFSIMS has been around for 30 years, and, uh, you know, I've personally been involved with TOFSIMS for pretty much that whole 30 years. It, those of you that have been in the uh, industry as long as I have, you might remember MSMS -MS was used in liquid sims or FAB back in the 1980s. Uh, but now we're finally introducing it to TOF sims. And the, the main reason why is it's coming after the development of cluster primary ion sources. The introduction of these cluster primary ion beams to TOF sims has dramatically increased the ability to produce large intact molecular ions directly from solids. And I'll just give one example that I, I particularly like because it was sort of at the beginning of that major jump or major change in TOF sims back in 2003. And this is a comparison of a um, peptide uh, analyzed by the John Vickerman's group in England comparing to what we were using before, which was gallium, the spectrum shown at the bottom, and then what is possible with a cluster primary ion beam, C60 in this case. So the molecular weight of this is 1,882, and we get a very nice signal with C60 and absolutely nothing with gallium. So it's a pretty dramatic illustration why we did not need MSMS -MS for most of the history of TOF sims, and it's only been recently where it's become critically important. Now that we can produce these large molecular ions, uh, we need to identify them. So I want to just start with some nomenclature. I will probably interchangeably use tandem mass spectrometry and MSMS. -MS. And these two terms are, are mean the same thing. They're interchangeable with each other. And different, uh, if you read the literature, uh, some authors use one, some authors use the other. If you search for either one of these, you will find uh, a description on, uh, say, Wikipedia or something. And here's a generic cartoon of what we mean by both of these terms. You have your sample, and then you, from the sample, you produce molecules that are desorbed from your sample using any number of sources. And in this case, in, in the Wikipedia, it'll, it'll list electron impact, electrospray, MALDI. What I'm talking about is the addition of TOF sims. And from the sample, you produce thousands of different ions. And it's the job of the first mass spectrometer, what we call MS1, to filter all these ions according to mass and limit you to a single precursor mass. And with that single precursor mass, we then put it into a collision cell, fragment it, and in the second mass spectrometer, called MS2, get a mass spectrum of those fragments. And in our particular implementation of this, we use a time-of-flight mass spectrometer for MS1 and a time-of-flight mass spectrometer for MS2. So our technique is a TOF-TOF tandem mass spectrometry. And basically, the, the, the overall message of my seminar is that uh, this complex mixture of ions formed off the your sample is difficult to interpret. It's all the molecules and all the fragments all added together in the TOF-SIM spectrum. And once we do MS-MS, um, we have a dramatically easier spectrum to interpret. The fragment ions are only from a single mass chosen from the, the TOF-SIM spectrum. So how did we implement that? Um, that's shown here. Here's a schematic of the Phi Nano TOF 2. And in this experiment, the primary ion is pulsed down to the sample surface. TOF SIM secondary ions go around these three ESAs to the MS1 detector. And here's where we record our TOF SIM spectrum. Now, if there's a specific peak in that spectrum that you want to identify, we've added what's called a precursor selector after the third ESA, and it's deflected up into the collision-induced dissociation cell, 
where it's fragmented. So after it goes through the collision cell, which is filled with argon, it then fragments into uh, characteristic fragments from that precursor, and we record a second spectrum, the MS2 spectrum. So this is the MSMS or tandem MS spectrum of that one particular mass. And in our experiment, we get these two spectra in parallel. And the only difference is that the TOFSIM spectrum is simply missing the precursor used for the MSMS. We used a TOF-TOF approach because it's very high speed and we can maintain the high rep rate used in TOF sims. So we can maintain the, uh, the imaging capability of the experiment. When we first developed this methodology, we thought the major application would be for biological applications. And that makes sense because there's nothing more complicated than biological samples. Um, but in fact, what we found is that the, the the more uh, quickest applications and the, from our point of view, the, the customers who have adopted this first has been in the in industrial problem solving labs. And if you, the characteristics of uh, the analysis of uh, industrial samples is, is quite unique and different from our perspective from the academic market. And it is uh, quite often the, the customer wants to do failure analysis, um, comparison, comparison of a good sample versus a bad sample, um, defect analysis, and an industry, of course, to develop and protect intellectual property. So if you think about the analytical requirements in that environment, the most important instrumental characteristics is the identification of unknowns because quite often the samples um, come into the analytical lab and all the information is not available. These might be product samples, they may be from vendors, from customers. So all the information of all the chemicals that have been added into that sample are not always known and you're put in a position of unknown identification. That makes running reference samples more difficult. So. Uh, the, the, what, we, what we're finding is the addition of MSMS plays perfectly into this environment and then of course ease of use and speed is always important. So I'm going to illustrate the additional power of MSMS through a series of case studies. Um, the first one is the identifi identification of unknown compounds on a commercial polymer surface. So the first thing most labs would do for a surface analysis problem is run XPS. So I, I show an, a commercial polypropylene here. Uh, shown in the red is a reference spectrum of uh, polypropylene and then shown in the blue is the surface analysis of uh, commercial polypropylene. And the first thing you see is there's all kinds of impurities at either pr on purpose or not added to the surface of this industrial polypropylene. Uh, we see the presence of sodium, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur. So if the exercise is to identify all these additives and impurities, um, XPS can take us so far. You know, shown in the, this is just the carbon 1S spectrum. Shown on the right is what it should look like for pure polypropylene. Shown on the left is the carbon spectrum where we see uh, not only the polypropylene peaks, but carbon-oxygen functionality. So we, we know that some of, the first thing we know is some of the additives have either ethers or esters or carboxylic uh, carbonyl groups. But we don't really know what they are. So that's when we turn to TOF sims because of its much higher specificity to identify exactly what these molecules are. So this shows the TOF sim spectrum of that same commercial polypropylene. So what you see uh, is there's in the low mass below 200, there's a bunch of fragments. And again, we see the impurities that XPS saw, sodium, potassium, small nitrogen containing molecules, fragments. But then above 200 and above 250, we see the intact small molecule peaks. 
So then the job would be to identify each of those small molecule peaks. Now the challenge here, as I sh showed at the cartoon at the beginning, is that this spectrum is all the molecules and all the fragments. So we don't really know, you know, which of these intact molecular ions produced which of these fragments. So historically what we would do is, so for example, if we wanted to analyze, try to figure out the peak at 481, we would run a bunch of reference samples that have a molecular weight uh, in this case of 480, uh, that gives you the M plus H at 481, and then see if we get a match. So here is a reference spectrum of Tinuvin 770. Uh, this is from our database uh, that we sell with the instrument. And of course, the 481 matches, but the, it's a pretty big challenge to match these fragments with what we see on the uh, polypropylene surface. Uh, because of the presence of all the other impurities. Uh, the other challenge we're faced these days is uh, that the databases that were f developed in the early days of Toff Sims all used atomic primary ion beams like gallium or cesium. And everybody today is using these cluster ion beams. So the fragmentation patterns are distinctly different. So the algorithms used for matching are not nearly as good anymore. So what we've turned to instead is MSMS. And so what we can do now is produce very clean fragmentation patterns of each individual molecule. So shown below is the MSMS spectrum of 304 and it fragments into just three main peaks, 212, 91, and 58. And we can see those same fragments in the Toff Sims spectrum. So it's not that Toff Sims doesn't produce fragments, it's just simply that they're all mixed together. And by separating out the fragments from a single precursor, the spectrum is as you can see, dramatically simpler. Um, and here's the 481, uh, again producing just a handful of major fragments that are different, of course. They're all, each molecule will fragment differently, which is the powerful part of the MSMS. So now the job is, now that we have these simple spectra, to identify them. And what we're finding is that we can the, the power of this is that we can now finally make use of the conventional mass spec knowledge base out there. And by using the MSMS databases that already exist for electrospray or any other conventional mass spectrometry, um, we can now apply that to SIMS because the, the collision-induced association of, of a gas phase ion is the same no matter what the source was that produced it. So it's also good timing because uh, these databases have grown over the years and just recently in 2017 uh, the NIST MSMS database is up to 650,000 spectra. Um, so finally we can make use of the, the broader mass spec uh, communities uh, efforts. And when we do that, so the software allows you to import the NIST library, and then what's shown here is the identification of our unknown Toff Sim spectrum on the top with uh, the best fit in the NIST library in the bottom in blue. And um, it identifies the peak at 304 of as uh, benzel benzalconium ion at 304. The structure is shown here, and it's got the aromatic ring, which explains the peak at 91, uh, et cetera, et cetera, the even masses for the nitrogen. So the NIST database has four different search algorithms that allows you to search the database. And you can, you can uh, easily page through all four and look at the, the fits. Uh, in this case, the, the match was num this was the number one match in all four search algorithms. And as you can see, it's a, a very, very good fit. Uh, same with the 481, the Tinuvin. Uh, 
Um, again, it was the number one hit in all four searches. Uh, and again, you can see that the, um, the fragments uh, match up nicely. So moving on to case study number two, um, this one is a uh, visual defects in a commercial medical device. Uh, it's something that uh, you might have to sol uh, answer for, for products that are returned by the customer. So, and this is a defect analysis of a medical device, and you see it's a, a polymer-based uh, device. And this region here, where the cursor is, is called the balloon, and it's got black specks on it. And of course, that's undesirable. The optical micrograph of those black specks is shown here. And um, the suspected cause or source of those black specks was one of the, t maybe one of the two different printing processes that was used. On this pillow, it was an inkjet printed, uh, these numbers, and on the pad, uh, I, I mean on the tube, it was a, what's called a pad printing method. And these are two different inks altogether. So the first job you would do as a Tough Sims analyst would be to analyze both. The, so the f top two spectra is off on the um, pillow, off the black spot, and on the black spot. And I'm just showing a portion of the mass spectrum here, but it's, it's quite obvious that there's this peak at 666 um, on the black spots that doesn't exist uh, off of them. And then when we analyze the inkjet printed uh, area, the ink from the, p the pillow, uh, we see the same peak at 666. And then on the um, printed uh, area, uh, this is a mistake. That's not on the pillow. That's, that's on the uh, uh, tube here. So analyzing these two, it does not have that peak. So then, of course, the suspect is the uh, inkjet printed area. Now, before, we would stop the analysis there and say that that's the, that's the culprit. And in this case, it is. But um, you can imagine that there's many, many different molecules. In this case, would be a molecular weight of 667. So we would have to say it's consistent with that interpretation. But now what we'll do is run the ion at 666 on the black spot on the balloon through MSMS, and we get the top spectrum. And then we run the ion at 666 on the inkjet printed area on the balloon, and we get the absolutely identical spectrum. So this just shows you how reproducible it is from when, when the molecules are the same, the MSMS spectra are literally identical. So it, it, it moves you from saying, writing your reports to your customers to say things like it's consistent with or it's most likely to being a, absolutely 100% certainty that the molecules are the same. So case study number three um, is even a tougher one. And um, this is the analysis of, of dyes, in, uh, in this case in red ink. And we're trying to distinguish two molecules that are actually structural isomers. And shown at the top, shown at this slide, are these two dye molecules. Um, and this is a classic case in analytical chemistry where we have to distinguish rhodamine B from rhodamine 6G. Um, these are widely used molecules in forensics and food chemistry. And they have the identical mass. Uh, the de identical chemical formula, it's simply the arrangement of the atoms of the functional groups are different. So in this case, there's no level of mass resolution that can separate these two. So what we find is that when we run these two through MSMS, uh, we get the spectra shown here. And the fragments, there's Many fragments are the same, but then there's also quite distinct differences. For example, the 399 is very large in rhodamine B, and the 415 is large in rhodamine 6G. 
And the nice thing is, again, we can depend on the, the conventional mass spec literature to explain this to us because there's such a huge body of literature out, out there. In this case, the MSMS -MS of these two molecules has already been described in the literature, and even the rearrangements that give rise to the loss of 28 um, and the loss of 44 uh, are, are described. So we see those identical losses, 28 in the rhodamine G due to this uh, functional group, and the loss of 44 and rhodamine B due to these uh, similar functional groups that, and they, they don't exist, they don't, you know, these two functional groups don't exist in the rhodamine 6G. So we can not, we can underst not only um, understand the fragmentation pattern, but we can, uh, we can make use of the databases to identify the peaks. And then, as I said at the beginning, we use a TOF TOF approach so we can maintain the imaging capability in the MSMS mode. So, in this case, we took uh, one red pen and made a horizontal line, and then a different red pen and made horizontal lines. And these two different inks um, of, from two different pen manufacturers one uses the one red dye, one uses the other. And in TOF Sims, of course, at the 443, we can't distinguish them. But in the MSMS, using our characteristic fragments of 399 and 415, we can separate them. So it's a good example of uh, how it carries through even to the imaging. OK, I have one final case study, um, and that is with a, an electrode on a printed circuit board. And this application is an inorganic application. And we wanted to in include one of the, these in the webinar just to show it's equally useful for inorganic applications. So this um, electrode, we know it contains gold and nickel and copper. That's what was put on in on purpose. But the, the goal was to, it wasn't performing properly and they wanted to an analyze the impurities. So if we take a TOF sims of that electrode surface, we get a spectrum shown here. And as I, I list the elements that TOF sims could detect, sodium, potassium, silicon, nickel, copper, barium, gold, thallium, and then the negative sims, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, chlorine, phosphorus, and bromine. So, okay, so that we're good up until the atomics, but then once we get up to the high mass moleculars, uh, we can't identify them because the mass resolution is not good enough. So I'll just take an, a quick example here. Let, let's take the example of this 472. We want to know what that is. You know, what atoms are make up that peak at 472? So we take a MSMS spectrum and we see that it fragments by losing uh, the neutral loss is 223 to produce a peak at 249. And then way down at low mass, it produces the uh, peak at 26, which we know as CN. CN minus. So 249, if we look back in the spectrum, uh, there's a large peak at 249. So we know that even in the Toff Sims, that this peak fragmented uh, most likely to produce that peak. So they're, they're linked together. So then going back here, we can s move our precursor selection from 430, 472 to 249. And now when we do MSMS, we see it produces a 223 and another CN. So um, again, the 223, if we look back to the Toff Sim spectrum, it's there. So now we know all three of these are linked together. Um, and it's a series. Um, and we go through the exercise. And we find that 223 fragments to just a, one gold and one cyanide. So that's what it is, gold cyanide. So then you work your way back up, and the 249 is gold CN2, and the 472 is gold 2 CN3. So it just shows you how we can work through a spectrum and identify it. And, it, and once we've done that on all these cluster peaks, uh, we can identify the entire mass spectrum and uncover any new atoms that are present.
So with that, I want to summarize. Um, the, the, the main points I want to make here is that the addition of MSMS to TOFSIMS makes peak identification faster and easier. You now can go to 100% certainty in your unknown identification. And the most important thing is we can benefit from these large MSMS databases in conventional mass spectrometry. I, tried, I gave one example, for example, of the st structural isomers where MSMS actually even makes TOFSIMS, gives it even more specificity for identifying the molecule. And finally, I wanted to give an example of MSMS is a powerful method of identifying both organic and inorganic peaks. Okay, thank you, everybody.